Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all staying healthy and keeping your sanity during this quarantine. Uh, on that note, I actually thought it would be kind of fun to do a little game room update since it's been, oh, a few months since I've done, it feels like it's been a few months since I've done an arcade related video. And a lot has really changed in terms of my layout and just how the arcade sits as of right now. So I thought I would just start, actually let's start down here so I can talk about one of the biggest elephants in the room, which is should be pretty obvious, but that's this brick wallpaper. And that extends all the way from that corner uh, to this corner down here where my TV is. That's about 32 feet or so. And uh, this is just a peel and stick wallpaper. It's, it's basically like your vinyl adhesive and it doesn't leave a residue. So when I eventually move out of this apartment, I can just peel this off, but it's very much like your, your normal side art. It's very thin and uh, it's just, yeah, it's like a vinyl adhesive. And uh, so my girlfriend came over at the end of last month and it took us the better part of a full day to get that laid in. Cause this stuff comes on, it's about 17, just a hair under a foot and a half, you know, foot and a half vertically or horizontally, I should say, cause you lay it vertically. So it's about 17, almost 18 inches horizontally. And then it comes on 16 foot rolls. And so doing the math, I ended up ordering 11 rolls and it's, it's not that expensive. It's about, you know, 14 bucks a roll. And uh, yeah, it turned out great. It just, it adds such a different element to the background. And I, to be honest, I just got sick of a white wall, <laughs> looking at a white wall. I mean, nothing screams apartment more like that. And, and uh, so I can kind of, you know, as I'm getting used to this, I can kind of believe that this is a legit arcade when you have the, the brick behind the games. And then the other thing I did and is, well, I should turn off these lights in a second here, but you can't really, well, maybe you can kind of see, I laid uh, about 16 feet of two strips of this LED tape, you know, the, the adhesive backed LED strips. And so I can backlight all these games. And actually, let me, let me turn off all the lights. I'll do that here real quick. And then I'll show you how that looks. All right, so I got all the lights off. Should be pretty darn dark in here. So hopefully you guys can see this. But uh, um, those LED strips came with this remote. Well, my controller for the LEDs came with this remote. And you can dial in any color you want using this wheel or programming uh, it into these buttons. But this is the color I ended up on. And hopefully you guys can see this here. It's kind of this, this teal, this bright, um, almost turquoise-ish color. And it kind of surprised me that this is the color I like the most because originally I was gonna do red, but if you see when I turn the red on, it really washes out all the brick. It's, it's actually too powerful. And uh, I, I was really surprised because after being at Grinker's and um, you know a couple of arcades where they use you know, red lights, I was just sold. I, I thought that that was gonna be great, but unfortunately it washes out the bricks. So I ended up on this color and I think, it, I, I dig it. It looks pretty darn cool. You can really see the brick pattern nicely and it doesn't overpower things. And uh, if I come back here, you can see the LED strips a little bit better, but those extend all the way down uh, to the beginning of the row. So pretty cool. And you can you know program any custom color really into this thing. You can cycle through them. I don't like the whole fading from one color to another. I think it's kind of tacky. But um, if I need a little more light, you know, you can add the white in there and uh, that looks like this. So quite a bit brighter, but you know, if you're having a party or something like that, you might want that on there, but it's a lot of fun. I, I've played, tinkered around with this quite a bit, but uh, those LED strips are really inexpensive. I think 16 feet was like 30 some bucks and they're bright. So that was right off of Amazon. All right, so let me turn all the lights back on because I need a little more lighting to kind of go over these games. All right, so let's go through these games. I'm actually gonna start all the way down in the, basically the kitchen. <laughs> so the lineup of my games entirely changed and I'll explain that in a, in a minute. Mostly it was because uh, while I had the games away and I was restoring Gapless, I decided that I wanted to, to mix it up, but I also had to move Cheyenne and I'll get to that in a second, but, uh, super hang on. And then, then eyes, obviously with the bit kit, all, 
All of the games that I threw on here for the bit kit are just the four-way games because it is just a four-way joystick. Uh, that's something I've been meaning to do for a while. So basically every four-way game that Crafty's put on there uh, is on there. And then of course, Marble Madness, Toki, and then Gap Plus I just finished restoring. So this turned out excellent. I'm really happy with it. And uh, so you'll see this. This is actually a credit button. This green uh, LED um, push button is, ba is just a credit button. And the reason why I went that route is because there's a two-in-one switcher in here. I actually jamatized this cabinet because for Christmas, uh, my girlfriend bought me a Galga 88 board that's been on my want list forever. And so both Gap Plus and Galga 88 are on here. So if you press and hold both buttons, should switch over here. Then you've got Galga 88. So I love, by the way, this game is so much fun. I've been playing it like nonstop. But uh, anyways, that turned out really nice. So I'm really happy with how that is. Now all these games are, are in their restored glory. Uh, Miss Pac-Man and then Arkanoid Revenge of Doe. And let me just tell you that I did not intend, I did not plan to have three midway cabinets next to each other. It, it just ended up that way after I moved Cheyenne. Uh, part of the reason for that is how I wanted the, the, the first part of the row, those three games, and then figuring out where these other ones should, should lie. But the other reason is that I originally had Cheyenne mixed into the bunch here, but I had to move Cheyenne and that's actually where the red, Cheyenne's where the red tent was. And the reason why the red tent is here is because it's just a little more mobile. When I have a party, I can just move this out. Um, I can put it over by the couch there for people to play. I could put it, I, I've had it right in this space before. Um, so it's a lot easier to maneuver. Cheyenne's a lot more of a, it's actually a deeper game as far as um, with the gun sticking out and everything. So. Uh, I, I like the red tent here for now. Uh, it's been working nice. And of course, if I'm just gonna play a game on this side, it's pretty darn easy. There is a chair over there, but there, you really can't get in. All right, so, oh, and then of course, the other reason uh, is the dartboard. And you can see the red tent, you can see the tape down there. Uh, that's the throw line. So obviously when I have a party or if I wanna uh, play darts, the red tent has to move, but it's really easy to push this. It's on sliders real easy to move. And uh, with the dartboard, I've got an end table here and that doesn't always stay there. So when I have a party that gets moved out too, that usually gets thrown in my bedroom. So that, that's all clear. So when it's just me at home, uh, it, it looks like this. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's basically the main row. And then the other elephant in the room is I just got my Willy Wonka limited edition pinball. Uh, bought this brand new in box. I, I knew as soon as I moved into this apartment that I would have a pin and it would go up against this wall. This wall was always designed to put one pin and you can see Cheyenne right behind it. And that worked out really well. But uh, yeah, I just got this just a few days ago, actually uh, last Saturday. And um, it has been a hoot. I absolutely love this. I plan on doing a video uh, not so much of the gameplay, because you can find those out there. And it's actually tough. It's very difficult to record gameplay of a pinball machine be just for the frame rate, because of how much space there is, how fast things are moving. But I do have a bunch, if you if you saw earlier, you see all these boxes over here? These boxes are actually all of the mods that I bought for Wonka, because there's some really cool mods. And uh, so I plan on doing a video that will show me installing all those mods and you'll get to see because uh, You know, this is my first pin I've owned. I've worked on pins before but um, But this is the first one I've legitimately owned and so I will be doing a video Yeah, and there's nice little call outs <laughs> and during the attract like that, but anyways I do plan on doing a video for all of the mods that I'm going to install uh, and I will go over each and every one of those. It'll probably be a really long labor intense video, but hopefully that will go smoothly. There's some really cool ones like this shooter rod. I have the, the gobstopper shooter rod and uh, 
yeah, I'm super excited for that. It's such a fun pin. So really excited for that video. And then Mega Touch has not moved, still here. Uh, I wanted to make sure that there was enough space for another chair. So, so a couple people can sit. You know, if you had a couple chairs, you can still sit and access Mega Touch. So that works just fine. Um, oh, well, I guess there is one mod, <laughs> the, the cup holder. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Mega Touch is still there. But otherwise, uh, yeah, that's, that's the entire lineup. And well, I guess I can take you through the kitchen here and show you Cheyenne on the other side. Ta-da! So, so there's Cheyenne. And actually, it's kind of funny because if you walk in my front door here, you just, you see the butt of the gun uh, sticking out. But it only sticks out like maybe about six inches or so. And uh, I had to move. I used to have that DVD case with all my movies and Blu-rays and stuff here. And I used to have my doll, my appliance dollies here. But because of the added, you know, hopefully get focus, because of the how much space that took up, and now with Cheyenne being a little a larger footprint than the red tent with the pin, uh, I needed that clearance so that we can actually comfortably, you know, walk through here. But uh, but yeah, that's everything. That's a that's the long-winded uh, update. So yeah, pretty darn happy. That's that is everything. And yes, hopefully, uh, I'm thinking like within the next month or two, getting that video or getting to that video where I mod uh, Willy Wonka. But uh, anyways, again, hope you guys are staying healthy. Hope you're keeping your sanity during this quarantine and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, actually, one more thing. Uh, and I did post it on my channel and also on Clav, but uh, the reason why I've got Castlevania in here is I do plan on doing another live stream and I'm gonna do uh, versus Castlevania this Wednesday, probably gonna be starting at 11 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Pacific. But uh, yeah, I'll be doing Castlevania or versus Castlevania and that live stream will be on Wednesday. Um, now with this whole, you know, working from home, working remotely and everyone, you know, having more time by themselves, I figured it'd be kind of fun to do more live streams. So anyways, Hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video. All right guys, thanks for tuning in.